Very good morning to everyone. It is great to be here with you as always. I would I would say something about how, how you might have missed me last week while I was on vacation. But as I hear the story, you're kind of glad I didn't know I wasn't here. No, it's not. So thanks to uh, Dwight for doing such an incredible job and blessing us as a church for the wonderful message and the crowd that he brought. Boy, I tell you what, now that I've said that, gracious, he brings a crowd, he brings a great message, I ought to be a little bit more scared. God bless you all. I have something, I want you to read the message up here today. I'm going to show you four pictures from Disney today. Because our, our goal today is to understand why we don't always hear from God. And there's really some obvious reasons, and then there's not so obvious reasons. So as I begin, I want to show you these pictures because I want to explain uh, my point with you uh, of being humble and being a servant today, because that's our goal today. I'm not sure how many people are in this picture. I would venture to say that there's close to 500 people right there in that picture. Now, that's, that's my grandson that's on the back of his daddy's shoulders there in the blue coat. But if we had put him down and let him walk, or we had put him down to walk by himself, would this situation have been a different story? I'm, I'm headed to a point. Go to the next one, please. Um, this is, uh, uh, what's that, uh, that, that movie, uh, Toy, Toy Story Land? This is Toy Story Land. Again, can you see just a whole lot of people everywhere? This, this is in every park. Go to the next one. Yeah. I, apparently on the Apple phones, uh, Kathy, there's been a new update that I wasn't aware of, but you used to could, could uh, pull your, your uh, picture down and make it smaller, and, but it, I, that, that feature has apparently been taken away. There's probably 100 to 150 strollers uh, right there in that picture. Again, it's kind of dark and I wasn't able to get it exactly Honed in. That's how many people were around all the time. One more picture, please. Again, you can see a mass of people coming our way. This wasn't so many, but there was a whole bunch down that way. It, here's my point. If our grandson hadn't listened to our voice, and if our grandson hadn't followed the instructions that he was told, we would have easily lost him, wouldn't we? So he had to humble himself that he doesn't know any better. He's four. He, he doesn't know he can, he, he can act out. Because what he does is mom and daddy correct it, thankfully. That's the way she was raised. So if he hadn't followed instructions, if he hadn't humbled himself and put himself under authority, we would easily have lost him in the crowd. All we would have had to do is take our eyes off of him for a moment. And here's the point that I'd like you to make with me. If you don't have your Bibles, we're going to put Philippians 2 up on the screen for you, but if you can go there, this is a little longer passage. It's a very familiar passage once, you, once we start reading it. Philippians 2, 1 through 18, those 18 verses I'd like to share with you. As, and this is a model, frankly, of being a servant of God and practicing humility with Christ. So we're really going to focus on this. I have a short sermon for you today, so don't, get, don't be thinking about the roast at home because I've got something to share with you today. Let's begin with verse 1, chapter 2 of Philippians. Therefore, if there be any encouragement in Christ, if there be any fellowship of the Spirit, if there be any uh, consolation of love, if there be any fellowship of the Spirit, if there be any affection of compassion, make my joy complete by being in the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty or empty conceit but with the humility of the mind regard one another did you hear that with the humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourself 
Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed from the form of God, in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, <clears throat> but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord with the glory of God the Father. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, so that you may prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent, children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights in the world holding fast the word of the life so that in the day of Christ I will have reason to glory because I did not run in vain nor toil in vain or even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and the service of your faith I rejoice and share my joy with you all. You too, I urge you, rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. Look back at, at, at one of my focus verses for us today, verse 5. And it says, have the attitude in yourselves which was also in Christ Jesus. Now the King James Version of this uh, says that to... Let, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. But the interpreters miss the, the emphasis of the Greek word phronio. Phronio means to make this mind in you. Or it, it is to direct your mind to be like this. So Paul is actually directing the people to imitate the mind of Christ. And to empty ourselves out of the pomp and the, and the puffed up uh, pride that we too often hold within ourselves. Rather, we are to become the servant of God with humility in our lives. To surrender our lives under God's authority. Now, the, the, the issue or the problem that we have here in, in America is this attitude that me first or I'm supposed to be something strong, and, and I'm supposed to be something bold. So it, 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 we, were, we, we used to be taught that way. We used to be trained that way, to be bold and strong, to make a man out of yourself, to make a strong woman out of yourself and accomplish much. And that's what I teach our grandchildren. But as Americans, we have seem to have taken this even further in that when someone says something that we don't like, what do we do? You hear about it all the time. They rage against it. We rage, get angry about them. And now we've got this social media. Now we can get on uh, Twitter and Facebook and whatever other platforms are out there. And, and, we, can, and we can rage against something. We can rage against uh, people. We can, frankly, make ourselves look foolish by the raging that we can do now on social media or even bullying someone socially. Not only on social media, but socially in a school, for instance. To, be, to put them down because of they have the audacity to have stand and stood up against us. Now that involves wrongful pride. Wrongful pride. How does, how does God feel about wrongful pride? Well, Kathy's going to put us up on the screen for us here. In Proverbs 8, 12 through 13 says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and I find knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverted mouth. I hate. Go to Proverbs 16, 17, 19 for us, Kathy. Look at this one. 
The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who watches his way preserves his life. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before stumbling. It is better to be humble in spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the pride. Also, we have uh, Proverbs 16, 24 through 25. This is what God wants. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. There is a way which seems right to a man, but it ends in the way of death. So God wants us to, to put good words out there, to put honest words out there, to put honorable words out there so that we are like Christ. Now, I could keep on going and talk to you, show you the words that Jesus shared in the Beatitudes and how he put a towel around himself and washed the feet of the disciples. But surely you, you get my point at this, at this, at this. Fountains of truth don't come from a spirit. Listen, you see it on the screen. Fountains of truth don't come from a spirit or a heart or a mouth that spews anger, bitterness, and noise that sounds like and looks like the world. God has to spend time correcting that attitude and inappropriateness before he can use the heart and mind of a Christian or to speak to them, frankly. And that's the whole point of our series, to hear from God, right? Right? So it is better to not let our, our, our behavior and our thoughts get like the world. Or frankly, just, just that, that the worldly thoughts find a foothold in our minds. Now, let, for clarification, let me, let me clarify there. Every one of us has certain things that sets us off. Every one of us do. And every one of us has certain thoughts about the person who violates our personal do not do's. However, when we let those thoughts immediately pass on and move on away from us, then we're not entertaining the evil uh, thoughts of this world or, or, or remaining on them or pondering on them. It passed through our human mind and we immediately dismissed it uh, from us, let it go, and it did not remain there. Because we are going to have those thoughts. I'm just, we're, we're human, okay? But if we let it go, then we're not pondering on it. We didn't entertain it. If we're wanting to be a servant of God and have the mind of Christ and to seek to move the hands of God by our prayers, then there are certain disciplines that we have a responsibility to conduct ourselves with as a child of God and to make ourselves do. And acting like, like the world or thinking like the world or running off at the mouth in person or on social, social media uh, are the things that we cannot allow ourselves to do because that is prideful. If we are wanting to be true servants of God and hear the voice of God in our heart and mind, there are certain things that we have to discipline ourselves from doing, even though we may want to. Let me describe to you how Henry Blackaby learned this lesson. Dr. Blackaby was young in his ministry, and he was not hearing from God, and he asked two godly women about his experience. And uh, they were... They kindly provided him a list of sins that uh, would cause him to break fellowship with God. And uh, he took those, went and examined them, prayed about them, looked at them, came back to them later on and said, As far as I know, I did not commit any of these sins that, that would offend God. And, and as far as I know, I have confessed all the sins that I know I have committed. So then they said to him, Then, then God is doing this with you. God wants you to seek him out. Spend time with him and let him speak to you as you seek him out in earnest. Dr. Blackaby said that's what he did. And sure enough, God spoke to him in due time. Now let's be honest. None of us want to be taken lightly or to be given some platitude from someone that we're really wanting to get some information from or talk with. God doesn't either. Uh, okay, God, listen, I want to pray for what you're, you're doing in my life today. I said, just, God, bless this day and help me to be the best I can be. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And then you don't talk to him again until tonight. Or you don't talk to him again until you have a meal. 
God wants to spend time with you. God is not a vending machine that we can just plop in a prayer and out comes the answer that we're seeking. God wants our attention. And God wants our fellowship. He wants to spend time with us. And frankly, wouldn't we want to spend time with Him? The God of the universe, wouldn't we want to spend time with Him? So this happens to me too often, frankly. Sometimes I have to force myself to slow down and experience God and have fellowship with Him rather than continuing to pray short prayers through the day and then having my devotion and longer prayer time at night, which is my, my routine. He wants our fellowship and He wants our attention. And sometimes He has to get our attention by withholding what we are wanting Him to answer for us. Now, I, I'm going to put words in, in Lois's mouth. She's had to watch a sister go through cancer treatments. I'm going to put words in Sharon's mouth. She's watched a daughter-in-law linger in a coma. I promise you, when we are desperate, we pray desperately. My point here is that you need to be in a relationship with God, in a in an humble, loving relationship with God, so that when you do have to do that, God is going to be listening to you. My point also would be to find time to spend with God so that you will be in that relationship with Him, so that when you do desperately have to call upon Him and ask God for His in, in, his intervention in a circumstance, in a situation in your life, he is there quickly. He's not having to withhold you or correct you from doing something. That's my point. So to avoid having problems in hearing God's voice in your life, we need to offer up our praise and thanksgiving more often and to spend time praying more often and seeking time out to hear from God. Now let me summarize for you. We read today that Jesus humbled himself and became a little lower than the angels to live like a man. He did not exalt himself. Who did he exalt? He exalted God. He lived and acted like a servant. And it really gave the example and he taught his disciples and frankly gave us the, the example to teach us to be humble. And that mankind is blessed. Uh, Matthew 5, 5. I don't think I have it up there, Kathy. We, we are to, we are, when we have a gentle spirit, God will bless us. The kingdom of heaven is ours. When Jesus called the disciples from being fishermen, he told them in Matthew 4, 19, to follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. And when Paul told us in Philippians 2, 5, to be like Jesus, those were not statements of suggestions. They were a declarative statement to direct our lives in such a way that we are determined to accomplish that intent with our lives. To direct our lives in such a way that we are determined to accomplish that intent with our lives. That's why I'm saying that the interpretation of the King James Version missed the emphasis. It's not let it be, rather it is make it to occur so that it will be. And that's what I want us to go home understanding today. That if we are to hear the voice of God in our heart and mind, then we are to discipline our lives to look and sound like Jesus. And to have fellowship with God. Amen? Bow with me. Heavenly Father, it, it is hard sometimes. The truth is, it is hard to slow down. Uh, when I'm in Africa, that's the thing I tell my, my friends there. Is, don't be jealous of us in, in America. We live a life that's too busy. And it's too fast. 
and it creates confusion and even heartache. And we miss the time with God because we always have so much to put into our lives. I pray for this precious family here today, God, that you would keep us, watch over us, and love us through our circumstances so that we're going to glorify you with our lives, to humble ourselves, to be like Jesus, to think like Jesus, to resist the ways of the world and become the servant of Christ. Thank you for hearing us now. For these that we have been praying for, we continue to pray. And thank you that your loving kindness is with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.